Philosophy comes from the Greek word philosophia, or love of wisdom. This concept was in direct contrast with philochromatia, love of money, and philotemia, love of honor. As of the second half of the 5th century BCE, Athens was known as Greece's capital of philosophy. Due to the rise of democracy, there was an increasing need for education beyond the basic subjects of elementary school. Athenian citizens needed to be able to participate in various functions of the democratic state, such as being elected for office, proposing new laws, engaging in military decisions, or simply defending their rights. Originally, Athens had no official school buildings for higher education. Sophists and philosophers taught either in private homes or in public spaces like the theater. To recruit young pupils for long-term curricula, they also held classes in gymnasia, where young Athenians underwent physical training. The Sinosarges was a sanctuary to Heracles, located in the south suburb of Athens. At the beginning of the 4th century BCE, Antisthenes used this sanctuary as a teaching spot for his school of philosophy, the aptly named Cynicism. Any free citizen was allowed to involve themselves in the Athenian democratic process. However, to truly influence the flow of politics, their speech and rhetoric skills had to be impeccable. As a result, many sophists taught subjects like logic, reason, and eloquence. These were meant to help students achieve arete, or excellence. But this specific concept of excellence was often challenged, especially by other philosophers. For example, Plato, Socrates, and Isocrates preferred a more moral approach and argued that rhetoric should be used as a means to serve the greater good. Socrates and Plato went even further, declaring that philosophy and wisdom were not only useful tools, but also ethical virtues. Ancient Greek philosophy was multidisciplinary in nature. In addition to wisdom and logic, philosophers also studied and taught math, geometry, music theory, and even medicine. For example, the philosopher Prodicus wrote a treatise called On Human Nature, where he outlined various explanations on human physiology. Philosophy's influence was also great enough to affect medicine. Hippocratic physicians were known to incorporate philosophical ideas into their work, and the treatise on airs seems to be influenced by pre-Socratic theories on air being the first principle of the universe. The famed philosopher Socrates had an ambiguous relationship with sophists. In Plato's dialogues, Socrates is portrayed as being in constant opposition with the famous sophists of his time. Aristophanes' comedy, The Clouds, meanwhile, depicts Socrates as a sophist himself, constantly demanding payment for his teachings. Socrates was in fact very poor and made no money off his teachings. He also differed from the sophists in that while they only taught aristocratic youths, Socrates taught everyone, regardless of station. And fortunately, his controversial ideas and practices did not sit well with the city of Athens, and he was eventually tried for impiety. Philosophy was not only a collection of ideas, but a way of life. According to philosopher Pierre Hadot, his ancient counterparts had a daily regime of spiritual exercises to combat their passions, doubts, and illusory beliefs. These exercises included meditation on death, 
contemplation of nature, or speaking with a friend or mentor. Philosophers also followed specific dress codes and diets. They were also part of a community of masters and students. These communities were created and strengthened in schools. Plato founded such a school in the early 4th century BCE, when he purchased a property in a grove just outside of Athens. The school was designed to groom students into philosopher citizens who could eventually rule the city in a measured and fair manner. It followed its own rules and was open to both male and female disciples. Well done, Wanderer. Even Socrates would be impressed by the depths of your wisdom. 